Good morning, church. Good morning. I greet you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is true the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome you to the, our outdoor service, the Providence United Methodist Church, and I welcome anybody who's visiting with us this day. We're just here to worship God. Uh, do we have any announcements this morning? Let's see. We have an uh, announcement from the conference, Bishop Leland, the Cabinet Conference Secretary, Reverend Kim Ingram, proposed a virtual meeting of the annual conference on August 8th. 2020 and more details will be following. I found out that the conference will begin at 1 o'clock on August the 8th. That's at 1 p.m. And so I'll need to get with our delegate and um, make sure that he has uh, uh, computer access and all that for the conference. It's only going to be a one-day conference and all. And it's just going to take care of the absolute business of the conference. So. It probably will take an afternoon, and that's about it, I would think. Uh, the Chase Corner Ministries is in need of food items for July. Uh, anything would be appreciated. And uh, so June 19th is a worship service, uh, online worship, and it's on Facebook. So you can go to the Facebook account for Providence United Methodist Church. It's uh, Facebook. At Prov UMC for City. And that should take you to our website. I have birthdays and anniversaries. Anybody having a birthday this month? Raise your hand. Uh, let's see here. On the 11th is Lawana Clayton. Uh, the 12th, uh, Todd Jr. Allred. Uh, the 13th, Terry Smith. The 18th, Mary Pilgrim. 720, Pamela Cochran. Uh, 723, Tracy Coffey. Uh, 25, Doris Smith. And 27, Philip Jenkins. And we, we sang happy birthday to all these folks uh, last week, so we won't do that again. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this place. We give you thanks for the beautiful weather which you have created just for us. We give you thanks for us being able to get up out of bed and being able to get, get here this morning. We give you thanks for all those who are worshiping elsewhere and are on vacation or taking some time away. Keep them safe, gracious God. For we ask all these things in the name of your blessed Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. If you want to stand, you can.
Jesus. And join me now in this historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gracious and loving God, we come before you this day in, in humbleness, seeking your, your approval and seeking your love, gracious God. We have requests to be made this day, and so we come before you as well of grace and mercy, knowing that, that you will answer our prayers, knowing that all things will work to the good. And so gracious God, we lift all those up to you who are on our prayer list this day, you know their needs without them even asking. You. you know our needs, gracious God, as we lift up unspoken requests in our hearts for you this day. And gracious Heavenly Father, you know that we love you and that we praise you and we thank you for all that you do for us each day. Hear our prayers. Hear the concerns and the burdens of our hearts. Be with our military. Be with their police departments and fire departments. Be with those who protect this nation and those who protect us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we offer this prayer in the name of your blessed Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now let us uh, go to God in our, with our tithes and our offerings. Well, the rest of come forward. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on this time of hearing and time of seeing. Let our hearts rejoice in you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
We give you thanks for the generosity of your people. May these gifts and tithes be used for the missions of your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Doesn't matter which one you want. I want to encourage you all to sing with me this morning. What a couldn't be a more beautiful place to sing this old hymn. So when you feel it, just jump on in. There.
Rachel, do you want to do your children's time for us adults? No, I'll say. All right. Well, you have your Bibles with you this morning. Does anybody have a Bible with them? Okay, well, if you got your Bibles with you this morning, you don't want to be without your sword. I invite you to turn to Matthew chapter 6, and we'll look at verses 6 through 16. I'm going to be doing a series on the Lord's Prayer, and the first part of that is Our Father. So, we'll turn to chapter 6 of Matthew. And I'll be beginning in verse 6. But when you pray, go to your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in the presence, who is present in that secret place. Your Father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't put out a flood of empty words, as the Gentiles do. They think that by saying many words, they'll be heard. Don't be like them. Because your Father knows what you need before you ask. Pray like this. Our Father, who is in heaven, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom, so that your will is done on earth. And it's done in heaven. Give us the bread we need for the day. Forgive us for the ways we have wronged you. Just as we also forgive those who have wronged us. And don't lead us into that temptation but rescue us from the evil one. If you forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive your sins. But if you don't forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your sins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And when you pray this prayer, you begin with our Father and really take in what all that means. Our Father. It's not just your Father or my Father, but it's our corporate Father. These things get in my way occasionally. Your Father, my Father, the world father, anyone who claims God, Jew, Christian, Muslim, anyone who has a common story. The story begins with the Jewish people, when God, whom God claimed from the beginning in the book of Genesis. <coughs> it began with Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. So Cain killed, that, killed Abel and became the patriarch of the Muslim people. After he was exiled for his crime, the Christians were latecomers to the story, brought in by the Apostle Paul through Jesus Christ. We are the Gentiles that Jesus talked about when he was talking to his disciples. We're the ones with the flowery prayer. We need to be specific in our prayer. God knows our needs. And God will grant what we need. And how do I know this? We have a book called the Bible which says, For God so loved the whole world. Not just you, not just me, not just Christians and Jews, but everybody, all who believe in Christ. For God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him might not die, but has everlasting life. 
That is a bold statement about the love of God and the cost of sin. The cost of God's love for us was Jesus' life on the cross. It was His sacrifice. His love for us. That we might have fellowship and relationship with God. Sometimes we need to rethink our relationships with God. God created all things. The ground, the birds, the trees, the animals, the very air that we breathe, even the bacteria and molecules in this world. God created everything. He initially created everything good. It was our own human sin that has corrupted God's goodness. But God's idea of invention has been passed down to humans. His creative process has been given to us. That is why we like to invent things and also why we have a bent for destruction. I was privileged to be at, a, at an assembly of, of one of my former churches, my home church actually, which is Loves in Walkertown. <coughs> they had invited a potter to come and he was, he was telling a story while he was making this beautiful vase. I call, I'm going to call it a vase because it was so beautiful. <laughs> and it's probably very valuable you know, to him because it, it, took him, it took him about an hour to create it. And people were just in awe of the beauty of it. And then he took his hand and went like that and smashed it. That shows our bent for destruction. We can we can invent beautiful things. And we can use them for good. And we can also use them for evil. And he knew that that, that vase was beautiful and valuable. But in his mind, it was not perfect. Unless he had created a perfect item. He's going to destroy it. And you could have sensed the vacuum in that room as to what just, they just couldn't leave. We have lost our ability to rest in the arms of our Creator. We have forgotten God's command to love Him with all of our strength and all of our soul and all of our mind and to love one another as we love ourselves. Our problem is we don't love ourselves very much. We make decisions that we know are bad for us. Just like I went out and I ate oyster stew the other night, and I knew I was going to have gout, and I do. <laughs> and I'll, I'll eat nuts, and that causes gout. So, I mean, I, I do things. But for some reason, I, I just desired it so much that I was willing to take the pain. We have lost the language of the heart. In Jesus' day, the mind was the heart. That was our, wasn't our brain, it was our heart that we thought with. So we have a heart problem. Matthew 23, 9 tells us, And do not call anyone our, on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors. For you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. We are reminded by Christ that we have but one origin, and that origin is God, and not our biological parents. We are here because of them, but we belong to God. Yet God reminds us in His Ten Commandments that we are to respond to respect our earthly mother and father. When we say our father, that takes up a whole lot of ground. And I believe I've only given you a morsel 
of God's greatness and of God's love. When we say our Father, I want it to be like a breath prayer. Our Father. Our Father. You know, Jesus had such a close relationship with God that he called Father, Abba, Daddy. I want us to have that kind of close relationship with God. To be able to rely on Him in all circumstances. And to pray to Him about important decisions in our lives. When I asked Jerry, Jackie to marry me, I prayed to God, is this the right decision? And it has been right for almost 21 years. And I'm so blessed. And God has blessed me every day. God has blessed me with this place. God has blessed me with you. God, I can call Abba. I can call Daddy. Because I know that He will be there. And I know that for some of us, perhaps our fathers were not very good to us. Were not very kind to us. And so, we don't have to say our Father. We can say our God. Our the one that we love, the one that we talk to, we don't have to say our Father. But God loves that term, Father. But He is the Creator. He is our Redeemer. He is our Sustainer. He is the one who brought us to this place. He is the one who called us by name. He is the one who gave us everything that we have. We only give a portion back to God. God has given us everything else. God has given us our spouses, our children, our mothers, our fathers, our relationships with, with our friends. He has given us all of these things because He loves us. So we need to say our Father. We don't just talk about biological fathers. We talk about our spiritual father, the one who nourishes us and strengthens us, the one who gives us purpose in life. He is our father. So when we say our father at the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, I hope it gives you a different idea. When we say our father, it's not just a prayer that we say by rote, it's a prayer that we, we say in our hearts to God and expect God's blessing because of it. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing again is leaning on the everlasting arm. Let us stand.
bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen.